You're listening to The Agency Podcast. Marketing strategies for professionals and business owners. Learn from two industry experts who work on the front lines of digital advertising and find out how their agency generates millions of dollars in revenue for their clients. From industry news and trends to practical advice, discover the tools to grow your business online. Here are your hosts, Ryan Leach and James Crittenden, owners of Fresh Move Media. Okay, welcome to episode four of the Agency Podcast, Marketing Strategies for Professionals and Business Owners. Did you just read that off the coffee mug? Right off the, that's right. I just had to remember the tagline, so. <laughs> that's right. We haven't said it. On any of the episodes. <laughs> hey, uh, we are excited to uh, share some really awesome content today relating to Google ads. There we go. Pay per click Google ads. So uh, excited to dive in here shortly. We're going to talk about some tips, best practices. Uh, I think by the end of it, most people listening will realize that Google ads aren't as simple as just boosting a post on Facebook. Right. And so we highly recommend whether it's us or another professional that you pay to run your Google ads because of the technical nature of them. Yeah, their um, Google um, beta program for Google ads or AdWords Express, not AdWords, but Ads Express mm -hmm. is such a limited feature when it comes to Google ads and you're competing against professional marketing companies that will always outbid you and pay less for that cost per click versus the business owner trying to do it himself when they have no understanding of the the marketplace that they're in. Yep. So could you be effective with it? Yeah. I've actually, I think I only known one person that was said he was making money, but he honestly didn't had no idea what he was spending per click or how to optimize his campaign. Mm -hmm. Um, but every person, every client that we worked with that had a Google Ads Express um, set up was spending so much money and the ad revenue was not coming in. Yep. Because it was set up incorrectly because uh, Google doesn't really teach you <clears throat> best practices on what to do to set up an effective AdWord uh, campaign. Yep. So, And actually, on that note, before we dive into the actual material here, uh, one thing to be aware of or to be aware of is uh, marketing agencies that wrap their retainer into the ad spend or Ooh, ad spend yeah. into the retainer, right? Uh, can you speak of, on that for a second, Ryan? A lot of uh, um, bullshit business tactics are done that way to make more money without letting the business owner effectively know. Uh, so a lot of companies, <clears throat> not every business does this, but we have had a lot of clients that have come to us and we've noticed um, this is their previous company was doing this for them when they were managing the Google ads for them. Essentially, uh, the way they would set up the, they would obviously own the Google ads account, um, but the marketing company would put their credit card on the Google ads account so they would be billed. Um, therefore, the customer or their client would not know really what was being spent on Google ads Obviously, they have a budget. Let's say I wanted to spend a thousand dollars a month on Google Ads, and that's what you told me. Cool, I could, in quotations, spend that thousand dollars, but really only spend five hundred, and say you only got this many costs, uh, many clicks, or this many. This was your conversions and your click through rate and all that stuff. But in reality, they only spent five hundred bucks, and they pocketed the rest. Yep. And so many instances where we have seen marketing companies use that as a way to make extra money. They, on top of the management fee that they're already charging them. Yep. Um, and a lot of clients that come to us is like, yeah, we, our, uh, our budget was a thousand bucks a month. And they say our average cost per click was this. And then they could have done the simple math themselves and yep. figured it out. But like, oh no, they only spent 500 bucks a month. And like, oh, well, no. I was like, no, look here. Yeah. This is the numbers and they don't add up. And where's the rest of the money going? Where's the most rest of the money going? Yep. Oh, it's just going to the pocket. Yep. Um, so when we do Google ad management, we do not put our personal credit card uh, attached with the Google ad account. It's the clients. So they know exactly what they're paying for uh, Google ads. If it's a thousand bucks a month, uh, if, it would, if Google charged them the full amount every single day, 
they know exactly what they're paying Google. And then they know exactly what they're paying for us from the Google ad management. Um, Transparency. It's transparency. Um, And that's how we do all our stuff. I mean, we could do it the other way and still show the billing to our clients and then we could rack up uh, all those, you know, free airline miles on our credit card if we wanted to. But um, at the end of the day, I just prefer that level of transparency with the client. Yep. And almost, as far as I know, all of our clients appreciate that. Yep, absolutely. So mm-hmm. something to look out for. All right, let's let's uh, let's dive in. And I guess the best place to start would be uh, with setting up a campaign and deciding what are you going to run ads to. And uh, obviously, you have to look at your range of services and you got to say, where do you get your biggest return on investment? for the services that you currently offer. Uh, Where are your highest margin services? Where if you're running ads, it's worth the ad spend because you know you're going to get a return on investment from a high margin service versus uh, a service that is really competitive and may not be a space you want to play in. I have a question before diving into that. Is why should someone do Google ads first over social media? Great point. Yeah, great question. Because... Um, yes, Google ads, in my opinion, is far superior than any Facebook marketing yeah. campaign, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. Mm-hmm. Um, it is almost guaranteed, I hate using that word in marketing, but it's almost guaranteed results immediately because it's people looking for your product or service versus Facebook is passive. Yep. People happen to see it and they might want it versus Google, that person's actively looking for that service or product. Yeah. And that's a, that's a huge difference when it comes to ads, right? Yeah. Because you're trying to pick people off in the news feed in their daily activity on Facebook or their daily activity on Instagram, which is challenging, right? They're not there to look at your ad. They're there to see cat uh, memes. Yes. Cat memes or <laughs> videos <laughs> like that video I showed you the other day, the cat melting its brain. Yeah. And so, so it's, it, that's what they're there for. They're not for there to see your ad. Google, however, it's people who are actively searching out your service or product and saying, I am interested in this product or service. Please connect me with the people that can help me with it. And that's a, that's a big difference. Big difference. And the amount of users on Google or that use Google search over the amount of users on Facebook doesn't even compare. Yeah. Um, I think there's, what, o- over a billion users on Facebook, right? Um, how many people actually use that every single day compared to Google on average, there's 5.6 billion searches every single day. Yeah. So there's only like 7 billion people on the planet. So majority of those people are using Google multiple times throughout the day to answer a question or find a product or service on something. Um, so hundred percent, there are more eyeballs on Google than there is on Facebook or Instagram. So. So what, in fact, let's talk about this for a minute. What are some ways, what are some traps that business owners could fall into when it comes to pay-per-click? Because there's a fear around pay-per-click, right? There is a sense that, oh man, I'm going to like spend all this money and not get anything from it. By the way, 5.6 billion averages to around 63,000 searches every second. (laughs) That's pretty crazy. Yeah. (laughs) So so what was the question again? The question is, uh, there's fear around running pay-per-click ads, right? Because business owners are like, oh, I'm going to spend all this money and I'm not going to see anything from it. And what are some sa- some fail-safes that Google has in place to prevent? Well, some people think that uh, people, um, like their competitors are going to click on their ad and every so- single time their competitor clicks on the ad, it, oh, excuse me, it spends that money. Yes, maybe that first click, yep. um, that competitor of yours went and clicked on your ad. Yeah, you're going to spend that. But they can't keep coming back and they can't keep clicking on your ad and thinking that it's going to just keep decreasing your budget. No, Google has fail safes. They want to protect their customer because obviously the cut, they want their customers to make money because when they make money, they spend more money. Google's smart, a multi, multi multi-billion dollar company. So they have fail safes. And as far as the length of time from a certain IP address, um, when someone, they can't have essentially have like a click farm, go through and just click, 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 click. Um, and try to reduce your budget. Um, and by the way, pretty much most companies are not diving that much time into trying to decrease their clients, uh, ad budget. Cause one, you usually don't know how much that is, but second of all, that's a complete waste of time uh, yeah. on, yeah. on someone's business. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have gone in and clicked on competitors ads to see what they were doing, yep. but 
it only cost them that one time probably when we click on that. I'm fairly certain they did the same to us, but that cost me what a dollar and ten cents, for example, on like Lux Metal Card. Yep. Not to Fine. mention, hey, it resets every day, so it's not like they're going to yeah. do that every single and day. Another days. thing, some people think <clears throat> Google is just going to keep spending my money. No, you put daily spend limits uh, that you want to spend per day yep. on Google Ads. So if you say if you want to spend ten bucks a day. Again, Google does have uh, like a 10 to 20% um, uh, buffer. adjustment, buffer, yeah. as far as on that. Um, so if one day they spent $8, they might go back the next day and spend um, $12. $12. Yep. So, but if you budget set 10 bucks, you can be pretty certain that if you are going to max out, you're going to max out at 10 bucks. You're not going to max it at $100 or for whatever reason. Uh, Google doesn't do that. So you just make sure whatever you want your monthly spend to be on Google ads, you just div- divvy it up by that number of days in the month or where you just average it by 30. Um, Cause some months have 30 days, you know, versus February or whatever, but we just average it by 30 and that's the monthly ad spend for that month. And then we drill down to per day. Yep. Um, so Google does protect you on that point. Yep. You, then you can also set time restraints. Do you want Google ads to be shown on the weekend only do you want Google ads to be shown at between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. or 5 p.m. to you know 12 p.m.? Um, there were times when we were doing Google ads with Lux and the way it was set up from the original, this was a, f- <clears throat> a year or so back when we got tips and advice from Google themselves and it ended up not working properly and ended up spending more money, but we found that we were blowing our whole ad budget to people in California at one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, who the hell is on a website? Daily budget morning. would be gone but like it's, this. Yeah. We're East Coast time and yeah. West Coast is different. So uh, we did some adjustments there to protect our budget. So our whole budget's not spent. And so people on the East Coast can still see the ad or whatever. So yep. if you don't effectively set up your campaign properly, you can be kind of screwed on that point. Yep. Uh, but you just need to know what you're doing. Yep. The problem is that Google Ad Express doesn't show you how to, yeah. how to do that properly. I said AdWords earlier. It's not AdWords. I need to correct myself. AdWords is a totally something different uh, yeah. platform within Google, um, Google Ads. Um, and, you know, then the other thing to consider is is Google is great at tracking everything, right? So you can be, yep. you can be tracking what's your conversion rate from desktop versus mobile, for example. And you might find that your conversion from mobile is super low and people are really only making a buying decision when they're on desktop or vice versa, depending on your product, right? Uh, so yeah, that's something to it, think about. Yeah, it depends on, yeah, again, it heavily depends on your product and service. Um, I've noticed that for, and I'm going to use Lux as a great reference, we have a lot of search traffic uh, on mobile, almost more than 50% of our website traffic is mobile, but... Uh, and we do get some conversions on mobile. Um, and our cost per conversion is a little bit more expensive to get that order on mobile. But when they're on desktop, they're more likely to convert. And our cost per click or cost per acquisition is much lower on a desktop yep. um, than it is on a mobile device. Because yep. so usually when someone's on a desktop, they're more likely to make certain buying decisions if go. it's a higher priced item. Yep. If it's a luxury item, if it's a something that has a long sale cycle, Um, say like buying a house. Um, Yes, you can use Zillow and all that stuff, but um, usually you're not making purchases of that, of that value on a a phone. Yeah. You're Uh, not, you're (laughs) not sitting on the toilet on your phone making that decision, right? Right, (laughs) Typically you're researching it on a laptop. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, yes, you can be researching on a, on a mobile device, but if you're buying a high priced ticket item, like a thousand dollars or more, even a couple hundred bucks, Usually, unless it all depends on how much money you have. Yeah. You know, if you have that FU money, then who gives a shit? Yeah. Um, but the majority of the American public, if I'm spending 50 bucks or I'm on Amazon, yeah, a lot of times I'm on the mobile device. But yeah. if I'm spending buying a new mattress or um, like I've been in the market for a new mattress, I don't know if I want to do purple mattress yep. or all these other ones. Um, I could do it for a mobile device, but I know the one that I'm looking at at purple, it's like $1,800. I'm probably going to do that from my desktop because I just want to make sure that yeah. I, I do it right because I'm about to spend almost two thousand dollars. And, that, and that's bed. you saying that as a millennial, right? Imagine what a Gen Xer or a baby boomer saying, right? They're even more so. Like, I want to be on a desktop where I can do this the right, right. way. It's because so. it's it, there's more at stake. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, you just got to cater to your audience. And now, then, now the vice versa, right? If you had a service and it was like 
people are out and about on their phone and they're they're just looking for a quote on something or they're mobile. looking for info, mobile. then mobile would be the place to be, right? Yeah. Restaurants need yeah. to be mobile friendly. And yeah. the problem is that most restaurants, they use Wix or Squarespace. Yeah. And if you, again, if you don't build it out correctly, a mobile site on Wix and Squarespace looks like, navigate. It looks yep. like shit. Yep. Uh, and it can cause people to go away because your color scheme is like just eye, eye blinding or whatever. Yep. Uh, it hurts the eyes just staring at it. Um, but it needs to be mobile responsive. If you have to pinch and zoom on anything, again, that's not good for uh, Google traffic. And then for Google ads, you need to make sure your website is optimized to the T um, to make sure all that money you're spending on Google ads is going to an effective landing page. This is what we talked about in episode two with having a great website. There's no point in spending thousands of dollars on marketing to drive people to a shitty website. Yep. Because then you're just wasting that money. Or just driving them to your homepage and expecting That's them to figure worst, it out. That's the worst yeah. thing you could do. Yeah, take um, them somewhere that is exactly what they were looking for. Right? Yeah, some some people will just send it to the homepage. Like, oh, I want people just to make the decision. No, people have already made the decision of what they're looking for when they did the Google search. Yep. So Google did the first part. Now, your job is to make sure when they click on your ad uh, that they're going to that exact thing they're looking for. Yep. Because if a person has to do more work searching for your product on your website, you've lost them. You've lost them. Yep. Um, the, the percentage of that person back, again, there are some people that will stay on to search because this is who they are. It is their nature. The majority of people will click back. Yep. Your bounce back rate would be a lot higher versus if you're going and you're speaking the exact verbiage of what that person just typed in. So um, when we do metal business cards, you literally see an ad that says metal business cards. And granted, you could we could take them to our homepage, but we set them to a different landing page that is really just business card um, specific. Right into picking a color. Right into picking the color and all the options versus our homepage is, shows all the wide variety of options we offer. This is Lux Meta Card. This is who we are. We do business cards. We do thank you cards, event passes, VIP passes, variable data. Uh, bookmarks coming soon, all, all, all this cool stuff. But if I showed someone thank you cards and invitations and bookmarks and bottle but openers, they were searching metal business, business cards. cards yep. It's like, it's, you're just clouding more s- stuff within that person's space that they don't need to see. And you're hurting your ability to get a conversion, which means your cost per acquisition is going to go up. Absolutely. So um, it makes sense to have a dedicated landing page on your website not some other landing page built on another domain. You want it on your website because you're spending all that money. You might as well spend it having directing traffic from Google to your website versus a separate landing page built by another company or whatever. Um, A lot of companies that manage Google ads for clients, they like to build it on a separate landing page. That's not the same URL because either they don't have the, it could be a subdomain of their website or something like that. So So terrible. Um, They do that because either um, they don't have web designers on staff uh, and they don't know the current platform or layout or want to mess with the current platform layout of that client's website. Um, And they feel like they have more control and they own it. So like when they want to cancel that person's service, then they can just cancel the, Oh cool. You want to cancel? Cool. You lose all this content versus oh, we'll build it on your website, and then now you technically own it. So, yeah. again, that's less transparency. We're more transparent. Yeah. Um, well, and, and and what ends up happening, right, is if you're driving, you're spending all this money on Google Ads, but you're driving them to a landing page that's not underneath your domain, then you're losing all of the potential search results that you could be yeah. getting. Every client. Your SEO improvement. Yeah. Google Again, <laughs> Google does not admit to it, uh, but every client that we do Google Ads for we have noticed a dramatic shift in time it takes for them to get to the first page. Yes. Almost all of our Google ad clients organically now show up at least at the bottom of the first page from when we first started to work for them when they were on either page two or three or even non-existent. Yep. So one of our clients, the luxury home builder, Mm -hmm. they were non-existent on Google search as far as, I mean, they were way back there. Yeah. Um, And then two months in, which we were not expecting after doing Google ads, they're like, Number three yeah. in the top organic search. Yep. Um, so again, the reason why you also want to do Google ads is not your competitors might be doing Google ads, but you're also competing with the organic search itself. Yep. And you can't really pay to be there. The only way you can be the pay on the first page is by doing Google ads. So you're competing with people who've been around longer. Um, and definitely if you're in certain industries like the trades, I know we keep referring to the trade industries, 
but then you have uh, like what are those other sites? Um, Angie's List. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I, um, Home Advisor. Home, Home Advisor. That's the one. Uh, all of this. All the websites up. that you will never beat organically in search. Yeah, they will they beat. Just you. have so much going but to it. You can rank up organically under them. Yeah. Um, but that takes time, and yeah. you have to do a ton of work um, to get to that point. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, right? but a way you can get above them right off the back. Again, they're also doing Google Ads too. Yep. So. You might be on Home Advisor, but Home Advisor might be your best friend as far as sending new leads, but they're also your biggest competitor because all your competitors are <laughs> yeah. also on Home Advisor. Yeah. So yeah. you might as well just be on Google Ads doing it yourself. Um, Establish your own footprint. Because yep. some people might avoid Home Advisor altogether and they rather just contact the person directly. So yep. um, again, you want to have it on your own main website domain, not a subdomain, not a different website domain. You want all the traffic going to your website. Therefore, it's boosting your uh, website visibility on Google. Yep. Uh, so, and we have seen direct results every single time we've done that. Absolutely. Um, and let's just briefly hit on the different types of ads you can run, right? Because a majority of, of the discussion that we've been having has really been related to search, right? And where you well, come up in search. Should we explain to people who don't know what Google ads? Yeah, I think how it makes it sense what they look like, right? Well, so, well um, the way Google ad works essentially is you create these ads, um, essentially just copy, uh, that link to a certain landing page. And the way these a headline, right? it's a headline, uh, and the way these ads show up, it's all based on the keywords, uh, or the words the person types into the search bar. So if someone again types in metal business cards on my Google ad, um, dashboard or my campaign, I set up certain keywords that I want my ads to show when someone searches these certain topics. So when someone types in metal business cards or metal cards, my ads are going to show up um, when someone types that in. And the idea is that uh, then I I place a bidding strategy for the amount I want to spend and to compete with the other um, advertisers out there to make sure my ad shows up at the top. So I tend to spend a little bit more money. And Um, where is this showing up on the page? uh, It's usually, uh, I think there's a max, depending on how competitive the space is, there's usually a max of four ads at the top and then four ads at the bottom. Um, but usually you always see four ads first, if not three, two, or one, just again, depends on me if we're doing ads and then you'll see the organic. And then below that, you'll see all the, um, more ads. But if you're at the top four, you're paying a premium essentially to be at the top four, because again, you're gonna be the first scene and Google's bid essentially strategy as far as what it costs to be up there. It's all bidding auction type strategy. Uh, it all depends on the number of people advertising and the amount um, of money that's being spent. So metal business cards, I only have five legitimate competitors in that space. So my cost per click for when someone types or clicks on my ad is around a dollar, which is really, really cheap. Yeah. So, yeah. but we, again, we have a high, uh, we have a decent click through rate, but we have a lot of tire kickers. Just That's just the product it is. Versus then we have, um, say like a, uh, the luxury home builder, their cost per click is around four to five dollars. Um, uh, there's more competitors in that space, and then we go to like our cleaning company, their average cost per click is like eight to nine dollars a click because there's more competitors, there's more people advertising, therefore, Google's c- charging more to be at that top spot. Yep. It's a whole supply and demand type thing. Um, and today with COVID-19, uh, the cost per click for a lot of stuff has gone down because some advertisers have pulled back on the ad spend. Definitely opportunity. It's definitely there. opportunity. And she's been cleaning house, yep. uh, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on, on conversions because a lot of her competitors are afraid. Therefore, they scale back on marketing. She stayed the course. Yep. Um, we didn't increase ad spend. We just stayed the course. And now her ads are dollars showing are stretching further. Her, st- yeah. her dollars are stretching further. Her cost per click went down. Yep. But that's essentially the way Google ads work as far as what they figure out the charge. And you can do all the keyword research yourself. And Google kind of gives you an estimate based off of your geographic area on where you want to advertise. Do you want to advertise to all of the United States? Do you want to advertise to a certain zip code? Um, you can then uh, advertise to a certain age demographic, um, gender, household income, um, you can have uh, different bid strategies based on the household income. So like the luxury home builder, their average sales price is 850000 on up. I put a 20% bid adjustment on people that are in the top 10% income bracket yep. because I want those people to see the ad more often because of the income bracket they're in. Um, nothing against the people in the, uh, say, top 50%. 
yep. um, or even top 30, they're not the clientele that that person is. Yep. They're more probably more like a quarter million dollar, 300,000, maybe $400,000 home, yep. not the 850. It's a different type of buyer. Yep. Um, and then certain people might make sense to do more female. Uh, if it's a more female liberated products, it might make sense to do more ad spend towards that market versus the male uh, market. Yep. And same thing with age. Um, is it baby boomers? What does your product speak to? And you can do all these adjustments and then you can have, um, in audiences targeting. So people who are like, uh, looking for business cards or, uh, any stationary type products, I can also target that. So they'll see my ads more often. Um, you can then do retargeting. So when someone's clicked on my ad, if they type in metal business cards, like two weeks later, I can do a more bid adjustment uh, higher to those person to that people say they see my ad again. So when they decide to come back, they don't remember the website for whatever reason. Um, That's they, good. They type you're, up. You're and, willing to pay more for that kind of and, client, right? Uh, absolutely. Yep. And we have gotten a ton of conversions that way. And I put about a 25, if not 30% bid adjustment higher than my regular bid adjustment because I want, I want to make sure, all right, that person's typing again. They're really interested in buying this product. So yep. I want to spend more money to make sure, all right, this time buy it. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. So there's so many different ways you can do in looking at the data to adjust and optimize a campaign that Google ads express does not let you do, uh, or a business owner uh, understands uh, or even has the time to dive in that deep. Um, so essentially we do that for our clients. Um, now back to your question. I just want to explain how Google ads worked yep. um, back to your question as far as the different types of ads. Yeah, so we, we talked about search, right? So the first, the top two, three, four ads uh, are, you know, people paying for spots, and then you have organic search. Uh, and then there's two others, right? So you have um, uh, showing up in local pack searches, right? So that's really nice if you uh, have a physical location you're trying to drive people to, uh, or you want to show up as the local provider of whatever service or product. Um, and then there's uh, retargeting ads, right? Uh, display ads. And uh, display ads can be effective if and only if they are uh, uh, retargeting, in our opinion. Um, if, if it's somebody that's come to your website and they've shown an interest in whatever you offer, and then they see a display ad when they're on a different website. So it could be on, they're on ESPN or they're on CBS 6 or whatever it might be, and they see a display ad, right, that's following them. Uh, that can make sense, but people rarely click on display ads. It's more for brand awareness. It's like, hey, top of mind, people still remember us. Uh, definitely different than search ads, right? Yeah, I mean, your click-through rate on a display ad is a lot lower. Yeah. Um, it's more effective for a brand awareness campaign. Um, it can get conversions, but it's definitely a long-term play. Um, and does not make sense to put yeah. a lot of money behind that. Versus well, that's why we recommend it for, hey, retargeting, right? It's like if people have been to your website, they've shown some interest in what you do. It might make or in market audiences. So people who are fans, so like our, the car, not car dealership, the car um, repair shop that focuses on German cars. Mm -hmm. um, I have a display ad targeting that's remarketing and also to people in, in audience. So people that um, have BMWs or Mercedes that they're going to see um, – their display ads on whatever websites they go to. Yep. Um, and it's gotten him some conversions, but the click through rate is nowhere compared to, I mean, it's like one less than 1% yeah. versus the, um, his click through rate is around um, six, uh, four to 6%, which is 6% is the, the number to strive for yeah. as far as a solid Google ad campaign. Um, the average Google, um, click through rate is like 11% like across the board. Mm -hmm. That's like perfect. And yeah. we have some clients like that. It just really depends on the industry that you're in. Yep. Um, if you're getting like a 1% on a Google ad campaign, then you need to fix your Google ads. Yeah. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Um, your keywords don't match your copy. I mean, there's a lot of things that have to match in the Google ad copy um, with your keywords and even the content on the website it's going to, cause Google checks that as well. Um, is there copyright claims? Because like for the BMW ads we do for him, we yeah. can't use board BMW. Yep. We have to do B space M space W to do ads. Um, but we can target uh, those keywords. So, Well, uh, I, I hope from that discussion, 
I think business owners in many cases might be thinking, wow, there's, there's a lot here. And that's why it makes sense to pay a professional to, uh, to get involved and to make sure that your dollars are stretching as far as they should be. Um, I'd like to transition to news here. And this is an article I ran across just the other day and uh, we'll share the link, but um, just uh, to further capitalize on what we discussed, uh, was it last week? Our bashing of Yelp, right? Oh, God. <laughs> Yelp. If, we, if you're looking for more reasons to not like Yelp, uh, for those of you who might, not, might know uh, or might not know, uh, restaurants uh, pay to be on platforms like Grubhub, right, to help them with delivery. And especially during this time, it's really relevant. And it's relevant because... Uh, because they need delivery services. And so uh, if you don't know, ultimately Grubhub charges businesses anywhere from 10 to 30 percent um, of the order size. So their margin is greatly reduced when they do when they use when uh, customers use Grubhub. Well, here's what Yelp started doing. Yelp actually started, uh, without the permission of the restaurant owners, changing the phone numbers in Yelp. So people would search for a restaurant, they'd go to it and it would say call now and they changed the phone number to a Grubhub tracked number. So now that is being sourced as a Grubhub lead. And so what it means is if a business, uh, a restaurant has built a presence on Yelp and they've put all this time and energy into making sure they got good reviews, that they've done all the right things on Yelp, they're even in some cases paying for ads, that now a portion of that is going to be lumped in as Grubhub sales. And so <laughs> this dramatically cuts into their profit margins as a business and it just cuts I the leg. I guarantee you Grubhub is paying a percentage of that to Yelp. Oh, yeah. Is and it Yelp kickback? Is, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Why, else would, why yeah. else would Yelp spend that time to do that? I mean, that takes human capital to spend that time and effort and man hours to adjust all those numbers. Yep. Uh, and to make sure it's going to the right place. Um, so you don't just do that by mistake. You do that for a reason. You don't, you're not gonna, it's not going to help your traffic because the person doesn't know when they're calling it's a Grubhub number or whatever. Yep. Versus um, why else would you do it to make more money? Yeah. And Yelp, as the what we said in the last podcast episode, was doing shady shit yep. uh, as far as with the donation tab. Uh, and then their shady business practices to get you to advertise. This does not surprise me at all. Um, Something to look out for, especially if you know a business owner that owns a restaurant, definitely something to share with them uh, and something to... <laughs> like the tweet on the ad says, last weekend my boyfriend and I searched for takeout on the Yelp app. It filtered all the results to only restaurants that were on Grubhub. <sighs> and clicking menu led you to the Grubhub order page. Um, wow, that is... Uh, out of, out of control. Out of control. Yeah. Um, I think restaurants can effectively launch their own delivery service. It's just the time of the market. If you're not willing to adapt to people wanting to eat at home and not wanting to go out, even before all this, yep. Grubhub became popular because people just wanted to stay home, but they wanted or didn't want to cook a meal and they didn't just want the typical takeout pizza or Chinese food. Yep. So, I think restaurants should have been able to figure out on how to capitalize. That's why Grubhub even exists. Yep. But now people are saying don't use Grubhub um, to support your restaurants during this time because they take a huge chunk, Yep. which um, I agree. Uh, order from your local restaurants and call them directly, but don't do it through Grubhub. Yeah. Uh, but the restaurants need to learn how to shift and adjust their business to be able to cater to the no. – Cater to it. <laughs> Cater to it. Well, and, and, you know, and that's <laughs> the thing. They and and now almost out of necessity, right? If if prior to all this, only ten percent of the revenue of a business was seeing was from delivery, they have to assume now that in this post pandemic world, that that's now going to be twenty or thirty percent of their business. So they they really it's need. It's going to be here for a while. Yeah, and they need to make adjustments to that. Yeah, right? they're going to be. They are going to be uh, people who will go out to restaurants after. You know, when everything opens up, at least in our state, uh, I don't know who our users are listening from, but in Virginia, it's going to be, what, May 14th, so that's uh, a week from now. 
Um, but there are some people who are just deathly afraid to go outside and it's going to be probably six months to a year for some people to. Yeah. Well, not even, not even to mention the fact that me, I'm going to go out regardless. Well, so. May, May 12th, right. Is actually phase one, which actually I think restaurants still, I'm not a hundred percent sure about restaurant seating. If they're still restricted under phase one to do just delivery or whatever it is, but, but either, either way, yeah. but the restaurant, when they fully are open and all the gates are loose, there's still going to be people. a higher percentage of people that want to eat out instead of, or excuse me, want to order in rather than go out. Right. So right. something to account for. Um, well, do we want to look at some memes? Absolutely. Uh, so we did, we did yours first last time or we did mine. We did yours first. Uh, I think we did. So do you mm -hmm. want to start? Yeah. All right. So this is uh, in response to the Facebook car react, heart, heart react. Shows <laughs> the uh, Aztecs pulling the heart out from the human sacrifice and the sun and then the emoji. The care emoji, yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's where Facebook got their inspiration. <laughs> I see. It's okay. so gruesome when you look at it at that point. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I even saw someone where they edited this out and actually put uh, what an actual heart looks like <laughs> right here. It's like, damn, that's gruesome. All, All right, right, so let's see. You got to cue the music and give uh, me a score of 1 to 10 or 0 to 10. So, so first of all, I, I like any opportunity to bash Facebook. Uh, so I think that's great. Um, People got pissed because they didn't get their heart react uh, this uh, it was rolled carry. out in stages, right? Yeah. yeah, so not everybody got the, the care emoji immediately, right? Um, I, the f most frustrating thing I find about the care emoji is it's replacing the placement of the laugh emoji. And that is, you know, you've trained yourself to, like, slide over to the laugh one every single time. And now the care one's there. And it's like, those are totally two different meanings. So uh, I, think I, got, I think I got something here. All right. Uh, I think it was this one. I rank this as 7.5. What? 7.5. I think it's good. Lower than the one from I last week? I think it's week? good. Um, I have to get more wordplay ones for you uh, that have That's right. I'll always, copy. I'll always rank uh, ones that include copy higher. So, uh, But, yeah, that, I mean, still, that's a solid still, score. 7.5. Yep. All right. Uh, my meme this week is in honor of May the 4th for Star Wars. And for those of you who do not know... Uh, Star Wars, it's uh, the stormtroopers in Star Wars are, are notoriously terrible at aiming. They have laser guns, right? And they can't <laughs> kill anything. <laughs> and so this one says at the top, it's got two stormtroopers looking at each other and says, Darts later? Says, yeah, yeah, why, why not? not? And then it shows a dartboard below and all of them missing. <laughs> That's a lot of darts for a dartboard, by the way. It is. That's a lot of misses. But, hey, if you've seen a Star Wars movie, you've seen it miss a lot. Yeah. All right. So let's cue the music, and the ratings begin. All right. So this is a meme. It's not a tweet. Yes, it is know that was two I almost ago. did a tweet. I, I uh, had a tweet in mind. <laughs> um, the thing with this meme, though, is you have to know... Uh, Star Wars um, and the lore behind. Uh, That's true. It's true. It's a little bit niche. I give you that. All right. I have a score. I have zero idea if these sounds. You're going to lowball me, aren't you? No, I can just see it in your face. No, these sounds, by the way, I have no idea if they're copyrighted or not. I just download them <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> But whatever. <laughs> Actually, in our meme title review, Come after it, says, us. it says copyright is violated in our uh, there we go. meme title. So. Come after us. Yeah, whatever. Actually, Regis, Regis Feldman will come after that us. That show does not even exist anymore. Uh, I don't know. I think there's some version of it that still does. Yeah. Yeah. I don't watch it. Um, I'm going to give it um, a 6.9. I knew it. I knew you were going to lowball me. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. It's I'll take it. Because not every person knows what Star Wars is. I agree. I agree. Um, and not everyone watches Star Wars. So I find it hilarious. That's why it's still got a 6.9 <laughs> versus like your meme one or tweet that got like a five. Something. Yeah. Yeah. So. That was that was a poor showing. All right. 
So that's it for today's episode. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking all about video production, and we're going to have a guest on. Ooh, special guest, that's right. Uh, one of our business partners, uh, Aaron Money, who is a phenomenal videographer. And um, I have a feeling that podcast is going to go a little bit longer than normal because yep. there's so much to talk about on having effective video marketing and having a, a great quality video because um, people judge you on everything nowadays. Um, you can't just go out and film with a, an iPhone. You could, mm-hmm. but a lot of nowadays people are so used to seeing quality video for everything. Yep. You've got to be able to compete. And then sound, too. you got to have that perfect. Uh, that's why you spent so much money on these damn podcast mics. <laughs> can't do it with those uh, <laughs> Those blue Yeti ones that everyone has that's like a hundred bucks and it sounds just yeah. So that's our next week's episode is all on uh video Should be a good one. and why video is effective and will continue to be more effective as time goes on. No doubt. No doubt. Well, thank you for tuning in and hope you got some value out of today. And we will talk to you all next week. And that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Like what you're hearing? Then make sure to subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. Stay tuned to next week's episode from the Agency Podcast.